Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. Today I created a new plugin again, and this plugin is going to be quite a game changer. It allows you to create functional track switches, and that all leads to dual sta uh, loading stations and all sorts of complex behavior that were not possible in the game before um, without doing some uh, questionable things. So um, I have set up a car ride <laughs> over here that has two different paths. And the car ride will always go into the path with the track element that's below the other. So in this case, even though visually, uh, visually the turn is on top of the straight uh, track piece here, it is actually below it. And as you can see, if I switch these track pieces, you'll see that it goes into the other direction. And that way we can actually influence in which direction a vehicle will start moving. Now, of course, you don't want to sit here and switch this track all the time if you wanted to go alternating routes. So instead, you can now use advanced track to actually do that for you. Now, if you don't know how to install a plugin, please make sure to check out my road lines pl uh, plugin video. In that video, I will be explaining how to install plugins in general at the very end uh, so that you uh, actually know how to install it. Once you have installed it, though, it should appear as advanced track. If nothing appears here, then that probably means that you're not on the latest developed version of OpenRST2 and you will need that to make plugins work. Now, once we open advanced track, you'll see a quick word of warning here at the top. And that basically says that the advanced track save data is not linked to the save file, but instead to the park name. At the time of recording this, we can uh, not yet save plugin data to the park save file. So instead it remembers the name of the park and later when you load a park, it actually checks the name of the park to find the data that it needs again. So make sure that the name of your park is something unique to prevent conflicts with other parks. So in this case, I have a unique uh, name set up here, so we're good to go. Really quickly gonna clear what I have here because that's from uh, a previous attempt at this video. Now, um, to set up this track switch, we can uh, click create new. And uh, here we have a vehicle sensor and a switch track. The vehicle sensor is the trigger and the switch track is the action. So the trigger is something that should occur and once that occurs, the action will be performed. So in this case, it will check for a vehicle at a certain location that we can uh, decide on. And once a vehicle passes over that location, the action will be performed, which in this case would be to switch a track around. So for the vehicle sensor, I'm gonna select this location like right in front of the switch here. And then for the action, I'm gonna switch the track in this location because this is the uh, important deciding factor where it's gonna either go right or uh, straight. Once we have that set up, we can actually run the track and see what it looks like. And you'll see that the track does indeed go into alternating directions. So that is pretty neat. We also have a different mode on the sensor. As you can see, trigger when the train enters, the sensor is the default, but we can also uh, trigger when the train exits the sensor. This basically means that whatever tell we have selected, which in this case is the tell that I painted in red here, whenever it gets to the very end of this tell, that's when it will actually switch this track around. Now, with enters the sensor, it will trigger when the vehicle gets to the very start of this tell, basically. So you can change that up depending on what we need. So if you set this to exit the sensor and select the switch track location instead, it will now actually switch after it passed the switch already. So in that case, it will basically switch the track for the next car to come. So let's actually try that out as well while we can. We'll see it first going straight and after that it will start alternating it already for the next car. All right, so that's pretty neat. Now, when we're working with block breaks though, things get a little bit more complicated. You hopefully all know how block breaks work. And if you don't, you are gonna require to have good knowledge about how block breaks work and how you can set them up 
and how they work in Roller Coaster Tycoon. One thing that many people do not know though is when a block break is actually cleared and when uh, or at least how that occurs. So this block break right over here is currently closed but it will be opened as soon as the train has left the tell that this next block break is on. So in this case this last vehicle here has exited the tell. And it is actually gonna look back through all the track pieces until it finds a block break. And that's the block break that it is going to open. Now normally this does not really matter because um, we usually just have a, uh, a circular route essentially without any branching paths. However if you do have branching paths this becomes a bit more interesting. And in this case we have two block breaks on both sides. Now when this train gets to the very end of this block break. You might think that it will open both of these block breaks, but this is not the case because the check that goes backwards on the track can only go in one direction. And this direction works in the very same way as how it is decided which track to take when a vehicle goes over it, except in this case, the check is backwards. So the train has now left this block break so at that point, the uh, Rollercoaster Second 2 game will basically start going through all the track elements backwards until it finds a block break. Now, in this case, we get to a switch and we can see that the switch is put into this direction. So that's actually the direction that it is going to take. And boom, it gets to this block break. So that's the block break that it is going to open. Not this block break though. This block break will now in this current configuration always stay closed. Now, this is important because you might think that using this plugin, you might be able to set up a switch right over here that just keeps alternating between the two and um, think that it will work after that. But that is not the, quite the case because we need a second switch on the other side as well to make sure that each time the train goes over this, it will actually open the block brakes in an alternating fashion as well. To showcase how that works though, we're going to move on to an actual dual loading station with block brakes. So I'm going to go into the advanced track again and I'm really quickly going to uh, delete the uh, sensors that I have right now in the park. And let's get started. So I called this one, the switch right over here, the entrance switch. And the switch right over here, the exit switch. So please keep that in mind because the terminology might otherwise get a little bit confusing. Now the entrance switch is going to be very simple and it's going to be basically the same as what we did in the end on the car ride. Gonna create a new sensor with a switch track. Uh, gonna select the switch track itself as the location for the sensor. Gonna set this to exit so that it will switch the track around for the next train to come and not for the train itself. And for the action, we have to switch track and for that location, we're gonna select the exit switch itself as well. So the, both of these are in the same location right now. All right, now I can show you what happens if I run this. I will not actually let me open this. That's because this station on the right here Oh no, wait, that's actually because this switch track right now is set to station two. They should both be leading to station one in order to properly open the ride and spawn the vehicle. So I'll really quickly do that. So this is station one, as you can see. So we just make to have to make sure that it is a closed loop so that we can open the ride. And there you go. Okay, so currently it's not moving. That's because all the block brakes are closed. If we remove one train though, it should be able to move that way. You can see that we end up into a situation where this uh, train was never dispatched. The reason for that is because this train, when it went over this block break, it did not clear this block break, or at least open this block break, but instead it opened this one, because as you can see, the track is still pointing towards station one. So basically what we have to do every time after it leaves this block break, 
it not only needs to check back to open the next one, but after that it also needs to switch the track direction here so that the next station is actually going to be open. So let's actually set that up right now. Gonna create another sensor and this sensor is going to be right on the block break that is after the exit switch. So this is going to be either a lift hill or just a block break itself. It doesn't really matter. It can even be a station. Just think what is actually considered a block break on the right and select that location. In this case, the top of the lift hill is the first block break that I come across. So that's the vehicle sensor location that I will select. As I said, um, the check to open a block break will happen after it has left this cell. So we need this to set uh, to be set to exit the sensor as well. And the switch that we want to switch is of course the exit switch itself. So we will select that location. Okay. So let's now actually try to open it and see what happens. And as you can see, you can actually uh, tell that it is sort of working, but not quite. You can see that the train here is waiting for this train to leave, which is kind of weird because it should be able to go into the other station at that point. To fix that, we have to be a bit more careful when we open this ride. I'm going to pause the game here. There you go. I cannot open the ride right now because as you can see the switch tracks are pointing towards station 2 and not station 1. So we need to point those to station 1 using the town inspector. There you go. And there you go. Again the game is now still paused. I test the ride. And this gives us a little bit of time to actually see what's going on. Now as you can see this switch here is pointing towards station one that means that this train will be going into the station for station one we do not want that to happen because the other one is perfectly clear and this switch should basically always be pointing towards the clear station so using the tail inspector after we added the vehicles to the track we switch this one back to the other side And now another thing to consider is that the block break section here is actually free. So this train right here should in theory be able to move. So to do that, I'm going to select this block break right here and open it manually if it isn't open already. And I'm going to switch the exit switch itself as well. That way when this train goes up the lift hill and gets to the end, it will actually look back on the, tr on the track and open this block section instead of opening this one. All right, with that out of the way, we just have to make sure that station two is actually closed. Go into the town inspector again and see if the block break is closed. It is, that's awesome. And now also the block break before the entrance switch is closed right now, which should be set to open because this block section is actually clear, so it should be able to open. Now, if we run the roller coaster, it will forever just work perfectly unless we actually uh, remove all the vehicles again. So actually, let's actually see it in action now and see that it actually functions like a proper dual sta uh, loading station. Now you might be running into some issues and that probably has to do with the amount of vehicles that you have. In the configuration that I had over here, let me really quickly move those back to station one again so that we can actually open the ride. You know the drill by now. Okay, so I have the game pause right now just to show you. We can see that we have two empty block sections right here. And most specifically what we're interested in is whether or not there is a train on the block section that comes after the exit switch. In this case, there is no train right there. So that means that this track should be pointing towards station two. Now, if we do have a train on that, which happens if we max out the amount of trains, as you can see, I cannot run more than four trains, which makes sense because we have five block breaks on this track right now. 
you'll see that the situation becomes a slightly bit uh, becomes a bit different. Because now if we check the tell inspector and check this block break right over here, you'll see that it is going to be closed. So in order to open it, we need to wait for this train to clear this block break and then it's going to look back on the track. And we need it to point towards station 1 so that that block break will actually be opened. In the other configuration with the three train uh, with the two trains that we, no wait the three trains that we had we had it pointing towards station one, two. However, in this case, because this block section right after the exit switch is actually occupied, we wanted to point to station one instead. Again, we do want the entrance switch to be pointing to station two as well because that is currently the empty station. We want to open this block break right before the entrance switch because this block section is now completely clear so it should be able to move through that. However we have to double check station 2 to see if that block is closed because if it isn't closed it will actually it might actually run into this other train and this one should be closed because there is a train in the path in front of it. With all of that out of the way we can now actually safely open the ride and you will see that again it is working properly. So just keep in mind that the amount of trains that you have on the track kinda changes the way that you have to set this up. It can be a little bit finicky uh, to do this but once you get the hang of it and properly understand the mechanics as to why this actually works the way it does you should be able to do it uh, with quite a bit of confidence. Now there's one more feature that um, advanced track has and that is currently the ability to open or close block breaks as well. Really quickly close this right again. Going to delete the existing sensors because I'm not going to be using those right now. I'm going to show you how to set up the block break uh, sensor. So for the action here we select the vehicle sensor and for this bit we select set block break instead of switch track because now we want to actually set whether or not a block break is open or closed. Create new and I'm gonna put a trigger right after the station of the black track and I'm going to set the block break that will be changed to the purple block break right after the uh, station. And I'm going to set that to close. Now, if I run the purple uh, roller coaster and the black roller coaster at the same time, the black roller coaster will, uh, or at least the train, will get out of the station and it will hit the sensor that's right here and actually close this block break that's right here. And that will prevent the purple, tra uh, purple train from moving past this block break. Now the fun thing is that we can actually synchronize these two tracks from a different point than just the station. Because if we now add an, an additional vehicle sensor with set block break on it. And set that sensor on the block break right here. Which is the same position that the purple train will be stopped at. And allow it to open the block break for the purple track. They will actually both start moving at the same time. And basically allow your shoot to uh, synchronize from a block break. So just to double check, our first sensor is right here and we'll be closing this block break. Set to close, it should be uh, to close of course, instead of set to open. And the other one, the other sensor is right on this block break from the black track and it opens the block break on the purple track. Set to open, that's correct. All right. So that should be good to go. I'm going to pause the game really quickly so I can open both tracks at the same time. And then you can actually see it in action. Let's run it. And as you can see, the purple train here waited until the black train actually got to the same point before they started moving. And just like that, you can do all sorts of crazy things with this plugin. And I'm really curious to find out what you guys can do with it. As you can see, it works 
across different types of ride. It works on the same ride. It works with block brakes if you do it properly. Just make sure um, to uh, keep this tutorial in mind when you're setting up the dual loading station. If you produce, uh, produce each step in the exact same way, it should be able to uh, work. And if you can't get through it, just make sure to ask for help uh, because I'll gladly help you. And if you're making a unique setup with this plugin, also definitely make sure to share it with me because I'm very curious to see what people will be able to do with this. Anyway, so that's about it for this video. If you guys have any questions, please let them know in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because that will allow other people to discover these videos as well in the future. And uh, that will only grow the channel. And as long as I can keep growing this channel, I'll be able to continue. Anyways, that's about it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching again. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.